Hi everybody, I'm Kevin Horn. I want to thank you for joining me on Equipping the Saints. And I have some revelation that I believe can encourage you today. And, uh, and this is, this is a, we're, we're entering into a new season, I believe. We're going to start seeing the body of Christ in the days ahead uh, begin to reflect more of Christ. In fact, Scripture reveals that we as a church Corporately, not just one church, not just one minister, but we are going to be reflecting, revealing the manifold wisdom of God. And when that wisdom of God starts to manifest through our life, you know what? It's going to reflect the victory of Jesus, what he did on the cross. It's going to have an impact on the environment around us. And so many people right now are, 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 are being discouraged by what's coming uh, through the news and and through so many voices speaking. But I'm telling you, the Lord has anointed you for such a time as this. And yes, even though it looks like there, there's things that are exalting themselves against the knowledge of God, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still on the throne. And He created you. He created me. He created uh, us. We are new creatures to represent Him, to, to reveal His victory in this generation and, and there is more in us than what we may realize. Uh, the, I mean, there is more what Christ did on the cross we have yet to fully realize. And I believe we're going to see a major move uh, in the days ahead. We're going to see the, the body of Christ so rise up that uh, the, those unsearchable riches that are revealed in Scripture are going to start to, to come forth out of our life. I believe the Lord is calling forth the gold in this day. There's going to be a golden harvest. He's calling forth the Christ in you to rise up in fullness. And uh, we, are, we are living in a day, again, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. There is, we are on the brink of a major move of God. I'm telling you, there's been, there's been past moves of God. Uh, what happens is when, is when we become aware of what God has revealed in the word, it, it can cause a, it can cause revival. You can look in uh, Martin Luther's day; he had a revelation by the Spirit that uh, that we are are justified by faith, that we are saved by grace through faith. And on that revelation, there was a move of God. Um, and then down uh, down through the ages, we 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 saw um, in Azusa Street. A little over a hundred years ago, they got the revelation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I mean, that not only was it hitting there, it also hit in Wales too prior to that. But that caused a mighty move of God. And I'm telling you, we are, we are entering in a time where God is calling us together. He is going to bring us together in such a fashion where the unsearchable riches of God, those things that have yet to be revealed, is going to be revealed corporately through the church, even the manifold wisdom of God. And when that happens, it's going to push things back. It's going to cause those things which are exalting themselves uh, against the knowledge of God. Of God. The, those things that are trying to glory in the flesh, it's going to bring them to nothing. And God put it on my heart to, to, to encourage you today because He's called you for such a time as this. And, and that's right. And uh, it says in Scripture, He's chosen the, the weak things to confound the wise, the lowly things, those things. I mean, God chooses the most insignificant things to bring to nothing those things that are, so that no glory would, no flesh would glory in His presence. And I'm just amazed that God called me to be a minister. And in fact, what I'm doing today, uh, on television and ministry, that's my greatest weakness. When I, when I first got called into the church, I couldn't even hardly talk, even to my wife. But God wants, uh, He wants to set us free. And in fact, if you want to know your calling, you know, those areas where you, you may be having a lot of struggle, a lot of warfare, you know what, you've been anointed uh, to, to displace those forces that are trying to plunder your life. And uh, there's a greater reality in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, and uh, and it's a time to shine. It's time to arise, to arise and shine because our light has come. Praise the Lord. So I hope that this is encouraging you. Now I, I just feel led today just to 
to build on this, um, this, this new season. If we're going to see a, a major move of God, which I believe we're going to see, it's going to come in, in, in a way where there's going to have to be fresh revelation. And the way God brings us into uh, the reality of the Word is through illumination, through inspiration and illumination. He brings us into that place where we can um, have that understanding. In fact, Paul prayed in the, in, in the church of Ephesus, he prayed that the God, the, the Father of glory, may give us uh, unto us the spirit of wisdom, wisdom and, and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And uh, that, there is something when you enter into that that starts to, it starts to change things. Uh, that our eyes, the eyes of our understanding might be uh, illuminated so that we might know the hope of our calling. I'm telling you, if the enemy can get you out of having hope in this word, he can add all kinds of other things on you. But um, scripture says faith is a substance of those things hoped for. And when we start putting our hope and our trust in the leading of the Spirit and what God has given us through Jesus, through the name of Jesus, through the Word of God, it actually starts drawing those heavenly realities into our life and uh, it gives us the, the knowledge of the hope of our calling. And that's what we need. And not only that, but it also gives you the, the revelation of his inheritance, uh, in his, the riches of his inheritance in the saints. If you go and read that in, in Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, not, <laughs> that brings into operation the, the greatness of his power that comes usward as we believe that's dunamis power. That's a miracle working power according as his, uh, you know, it's according to the working of his power there. And that's, that's kingdom dominion. And so there, God is calling us into a position is what I'm, I'm saying here in the kingdom. And we need to have that, that knowledge of our calling. We need to put our hope in that. And when we start at trusting the Lord to draw us into our place, we're making a way uh, for that greater reality to come forth through our life and and we're going to start seeing the wisdom of God in such a way that it's going to it's going to change things in fact it says in scripture um, this is in first uh, Corinthians 1 30 it says but of him are you in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom righteousness sanctification and redemption and uh, it goes on to, you know, uh, this is a big deal. Uh, let me just see if I can find that scripture. 1 Corinthians 1.30 here. Uh, it goes on to say that according as it is written, that he that glories, let him glory in the Lord. We're to do, we're to shine our light through the, the life of Jesus. In fact, Jesus said in scripture, he says, the works that I do, you shall do also. That's John 14.12. He says, ask anything in my name and I'll do it that the Father would be glorified in the Son. And our lives are hid in Christ and God. And, and I'm telling you, when we start putting our hope in, in, in the Word, the Holy Spirit, it actually starts to bring into operation the Kingdom of God. It, it makes a way for, for the gifts of the Spirit. It makes a way for our position in the Kingdom to start to operate and, and for the whole operation of God to operate in our life and through our life. And, um, and that's in, that's in 1, John, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it says there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. These gifts are real. We need them. We need the gifts of knowledge, the gifts of wisdom and faith, and goes on and on, discernment. And the Holy Spirit wants to bring these into operation in our life. And I've discovered that when I started aligning myself with the call of the Lord, that these things just start to happen in my life. And I don't try to make them happen. It's an operation of God. In fact, God works through love. It works through perfection. And it says there are diversities or differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And that's where we come in. We are connected to Jesus. You know, Jesus uh, was the embodiment of wisdom. Solomon was the wisest man that lived, but Jesus was the embodiment of wisdom. And we are called... Uh, the, the body of Christ. We are members one of another. We are members of the body of Christ. 
members of one another in particular. And God has set every one of us in, in this position in his body as it has pleased him. And when we can find that place, I'm telling you, uh, there, is a, there is a synergy. There is a coming together. God is trying to bring us all together, not only in our little area, but what we do in our area can actually impact the church corporately. It brings us in such a place where there's an operation of the kingdom of God. And when the kingdom of God starts to manifest through our life, it brings a dominion, it brings a victory, it brings the reality of Jesus, what he did on the cross in the manifestation. And that makes an impact. I'm telling you, how many want to make an impact in this generation? Oh, yeah. And so we need to find our hope. We need to have that hope of our calling. And it has to be by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. And now we're just going to read a few verses here just to encourage you because uh, this is something that, that the Lord is calling us into, that the first century church, they started walking in this. And, and so if you have your Bibles, um, turn with me to Ephesians chapter uh, 3. And I'm going to read beginning with verse 2. And um, this is, there's a lot of revelation here. I just want to back up what I'm saying and, and with the word, and there's grace. That's where this grace comes uh, from, through the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And so it says, if you have heard of the dispensation of grace of God, which is given me to you word, this is this dispensation that we are now living in, how that by revelation, hear that, uh, he made known unto me the, the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge uh, in the mystery of Christ. And this is what we're talking about. There is, there is revelation knowledge in you that is, is, is uh, for this generation. And when we can come into our place in the body of Christ, it's going to reveal these, these, these riches. And, and uh, I mean, the wisdom of God is more precious than gold. And it goes on to say, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. It's by the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And uh, down in verse 9, it says, unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Now again, I want to just encourage you, this is, a, this is something that God has already done He's already set us up in our place. The, 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 the blueprints are there. Uh, all we have to do is allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead us and guide us. And, and it happens as we start to hope and, and, and pray to be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And it, it illuminates us and, and it, it gives us that knowledge of the hope of our calling. When we have that knowledge, it's a sure deal if we'll just walk it out. And, uh, and you're going to start to see the riches of his inheritance come forth in your life. And it will have an impact. So I hope that this is encouraging people today. And I tell you, there are so many things that the, the Lord is calling this generation into. And I remember in my own life, um, you know, again, I, I'm just amazed that, that God called me. And... Uh, uh, when I got called, I thought there was no way I could do the things he was calling me to do. But you know what? God has chosen us to do things from the foundation of the world. He called me to speak, to preach, and uh, that's my greatest weakness. But doesn't Scripture say, let the weak say I'm strong? Doesn't it say that those that know the Lord shall do exploits? Oh man, God is, God is stirring us. He's bringing us together. He's bringing us into that place where the manifold wisdom of God is going to re reflect out of our life and the principalities and powers of darkness are going to, are going to be pushed back by this light, the glory of God. In fact, the whole earth is going to be filled with a knowledge of His glory 
as we step into our position and start shining our light in this generation. It's going to create such a shift. And so I, I'm getting all excited here about this right here. And I remember in my calling, you know, um, again, realize it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that God, not many wise are called, not many mighty are called, not many noble. I mean, God has chosen the foolish things to confound the wise. He's chosen the weak things. You know, the, those things that uh, are <laughs> despised even to bring to not, to bring to nothing those things that are so that no flesh should glory in his presence. And if there was ever a time where the church needed to arise and come together, now's the time. And so how is this going to happen? How could this happen in our life? You know, it reveals this in Colossians 2, 2. In the first century church, they were walking in this. They were entering into this. And I mean, it started with Jesus and his disciples caught the revelation. They, in turn, started shining the light. It impacted the church. And in their generation, they turned that, that world upside down. And that's what God is calling us to do again in this generation, in a greater way even, through the corporate body of Christ worldwide. Hallelujah. And so, and so how does this happen? Colossians 2.2, 2, it reveals that, uh, I'm going to just pull this up on my screen, Colossians 2.2, 2, um, that there is a knitting together. And please hear me, God is knitting together those who will be knit together. And, and how does this happen? Through love. And again, we are changed, we are perfected through love. That's in uh, 1 John 4.12, it says, No man has seen God at any time, but... If we love one another, God dwells in us or tabernacles in us, and we are perfected uh, through love. And if we really want to see who we were created to be come into manifestation in fullness, we have to start walking in love with one another, not only with God, but with one another. And there is a shift, there's a transformation that just happens, and it's miraculous. And, and, uh, and, and in that process, when we start, you know, being really concerned for others, even those that we don't like, even other churches, you know, I mean, I mean, we got to be for everybody in the church. I mean, the, the Baptists need to be for the, 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 the full gospel people and, and vice versa. I mean, we can't say we don't need other churches that we're the only church or that we're the eye and we don't need the toe. I mean, we need, we need the whole body of Christ and it's only God that can bring us all together. It says in Scripture that there are diversities of spirits, but the same spirit. There are diversities of, oper of operation, but it's God that works all in all. And in and, and our position, uh, backing up there, there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Our position is to come into our place in Christ, and God will bring into operation all of this. And, and we'll start just by, by being who we are in Christ, manifesting these riches, the wisdom of God, manifold wisdom of God, will start to come forth and it will change things. It will bring those things that are exalting themselves in the flesh, in this generation, to nothing. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, there's a shift that's coming. Hallelujah. But how is it going to come? It's going to come through love. It's going to come through us becoming living sacrifices, setting aside our agenda our, our way of doing things and saying, Lord, you know what? I can't touch this with the flesh. You have to lead me. You have to guide me, Holy Spirit. And he has been sent just to do that, to establish us in the truth to the point where there's a greater reality, Jesus in us, the hope of glory, shining forth. And when that happens, the spirit of understanding is going to come. And again, so faith is the substance of those things hoped for, Hebrews 11.1, 1, it is the evidence of those things not yet seen. So when you start praying to be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, you know what? You're going to start to uh, start having hope on that. It's going to start drawing the Holy Spirit. It's going to bring into operation the kingdom of God. And if you'll be faithful in, the, in his guiding light, you're going to see the, establish, the establishment of your call. You're going to see the operation of the kingdom. And it's really not faith until it operates. And, and faith, I'm telling you, operates. It works by love. 
And, and that is just a, a revelation there. So I hope that this is encouraging you. And so in my case, um, again, I was, I was called uh, into the marketplace, into the church, and into the full gospel ministry, uh, ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I remember early on in my call, uh, I had a prophetic word that God called me to be a poet and um, to be a prophetic. And, um, and one of the ladies that was in this, this meeting at that time up in Sonora heard the, the prophetic word. She says, I want to see some of your poetry. I mean, the guy didn't even know I was writing poetry. God had spoken to me, radically saved me, and he spoke to me in a poetic way in thunder. And uh, I mean, it changed me. And ever since then, I've been writing poetry. And, uh, and she, she wanted to hear it. And, and so what happened is um, I showed a little bit of it to her, and she says, you know what? I want, I want to, you're going to have to step up uh, and speak this behind a microphone. When she said that, I just kind of shook with fear. You know what? And I think that uh, the, the enemy has tried to establish things in our life that, uh, that have, will hinder us from moving forward in the kingdom. I mean, those areas where you're being challenged, where there's warfare, I'm, I'm suggesting to you that may be some of those areas that you're called into. And, uh, and so we have to cross, in my case, the chicken line, if you will, and step forth into Christ and, 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 stop and start stepping into obedience. And that's what faith, you know, um, loving God is, is being obedient to his leading. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments and, and he'll manifest. And it says our love is perfected. You know, herein is our love perfected. You know, that we may have boldness. And when we step into that lifestyle of, of, of obedience, of love, it starts breaking down fear, uh, doubt, unbelief, those things that hinder us in our call. It changes us. It, it brings into operation the, the life of Jesus. And through that operation, there's going to be wisdom. There's going to be things that you can never do in and of yourself will just start coming forth. And... Uh, and when God called you and he starts talking to you, I'm suggesting to you, it's most likely you're, you're not going to know how to do it in and of yourself. But it reveals in, in uh, Hebrews 11.3 that it's through faith that we understand. I've discovered that when I started walking in, in love with the Lord, and op, you know, the operation of faith started to operate, I started to understand. And when I started to understand, you know, I had the, the wisdom and started coming. In fact, the Lord called me to, to, to build churches. He's called me to, to, uh, to build a, a website, a satellite network website, and to do television and these things, things that I had no experience doing in, in the natural world. But you know what? Uh, the Holy Spirit knows everything about us, and if we'll just follow him step by step from faith to faith, you know, we are going to be transformed. We go from glory to glory these riches start to manifest in our life from glory to glory, and it, it brings in uh, to manifestation the kingdom of God. And so I hope that this is blessing you today. I mean, God's called all of us. And, and you know what? His, his means to bring us into this fullness is, is through the gifts. And this is something that I've learned and I'm learning, that if we can start making room for the gifts of the Spirit, They'll make room for us. If we can live within the measure of faith that God gives us, you know what? Uh, we're going to see increase. And I think the reason why we don't see much of the reality of Christ is we, is we go beyond those measures of grace given to us and we speak and we, we act beyond the, the revelation of the, of the Spirit. But we are, we're supposed to speak from the realm of the Spirit. We're not even supposed to know each other after the flesh anymore. I mean, God has made us able ministers of the new covenant, not according to the letter, but after the Spirit. And, and when we step into our position in Christ and really start uh, determining to be faithful and obedient, you're going to see things that you'll never, you'll never see any other way come forth in your life. And, and God can operate through that. He can draw through your life when you're, when you're in your position. In fact, that's what... Our, our call is, all of us are called to be ambassadors, representatives of Jesus. And it says God was in the world, 
you know, I mean, God was drawing uh, the, the world to, to himself through Jesus and has committed unto us this same word, this ministry of reconciliation. But it's not going to draw, have a lot of drawing until we find our place in Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to bring in this operation of the gifts and uh, our, our, our um, places in the body, whether it's a, you know, um, a fivefold ministry gift or or just, you know, a, a position in the world, doesn't matter. I mean, every part of the body is important. And God has placed us all in the body as it has pleased Him. And so I want to thank you for joining me today on this broadcast. And uh, I pray that this has encouraged you. Let me encourage you to, to get a copy. You know, stay tuned. I'll show you how to get a copy. And, and listen to these, these, these uh, revelations and get your Bible out. Read them. You know, when I started making a way for the Lord to establish the Word in my life, it started operating. And, uh, and that made all the difference in the world. I used to just hear a message and just go on to the next message, and it, nothing really happened. But when I started really getting serious about, about the Word of God and my call, uh, the Holy Spirit started really operating and, and doing things in my life. So I want to encourage you to get a copy of this. And I believe it will bless you. Log on to our website. Again, we have a ministry that is embracing the fivefold with people that just want to just share what God has given them, real revelation, you know, from the realm of truth to, to build others, encourage others. And I believe it will bless you. And uh, maybe you don't know Jesus as well, you know, as your Lord and Savior right now, right where you're at. Let me encourage you. And, and, and for those that may have gotten away from the Lord, you know, come back to the Lord, just repent of your sins and say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. You rose from the dead on the third day. Come into my life and save me and be my Lord. And, uh, you know, if you prayed that, he will. And I would love to hear from you and, and hear about it. Let me encourage you, contact me, call me. And, uh, and again, thank you for joining me today. I pray you tune in next week, this same time. May the Lord richly bless you.